Hello, I'm Monica, a bilingual gallery teacher at the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art. Today on Cooped Up with the Carter, we'll be exploring a painting by Thomas Hutherton. Let's take a closer look. Now who do you see in this space? The title of this painting is Chloe and Sam. Sam was the neighbor of the artist, Thomas Hutherton, and the female figure in the painting might have been Sam's wife, Hester but the artist changed her name in the title to reference a character in the 1852 anti-slavery novel by Harry Beecher Stowe, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Now let's look at the woman in the painting, Chloe. How would you describe her? What is she doing? To me, she looks like she's standing over a table, maybe ironing, gazing outside of the window. Let's look at Sam. How would you describe him? He's sitting, he's smelling something maybe, He's looking. He looks a little tired to me. Maybe he's been cooking for a long time. What do you think is in the pot in front of him? Now let's take a moment to think about the chores we're seeing in the painting and the steps that it might have been involved. Are there any steps that we don't see? Maybe washing clothes or cutting meats and vegetables to go in the pot or maybe even cleaning dishes after the meal? Are there any chores or jobs that you do for your family? Have you ever helped in the kitchen? Was there something special that you made? These are all great things to think about right now where we can all work together in our homes. Hi, I'm Asami, a bilingual gallery teacher at the Carter Museum. Today on Cooped Up with the Carter, we will be collaborating with our housemates by making a cookbook as we look at Chloe and Sam by Thomas Hovenden. One of my favorite things to do is cook, and it's even more special when I get to use one of my mom's recipes. My family has taught me a lot of yummy recipes and a great way to preserve them is to make a cookbook. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Let's get started. Okay guys, so for today's activity, we're gonna need a couple things. We're gonna need some paper, something to cut with, or something to make a hole with. I'll explain a little later. A ribbon or something to tie things together with. A pen or a pencil. I'm gonna use a pen just so you can really see my lines and then something to color with. So this can be markers, crayons, colored pencils, anything you want, okay? So the first thing that we need to do, and it's the most important thing, is you need to decide what your recipe is gonna be. So for my recipe, I am choosing my absolute favorite thing to eat, which is chilaquiles. So I'm gonna start off my recipe by putting the title on it, so. So the next thing that you're gonna do is you're actually gonna draw your recipe. So what does the final product look like? And I'm, again, I'm using a pen just so that you guys can see my lines really well. So I'm gonna start out with drawing my dish. Now I'm gonna, mine kind of looks a little bit like nachos. So I'm gonna start off by drawing some of the tortilla chips. It might be helpful if you have some of the ingredients at your house to go and pull them from the fridge or from the pantry so that you can practice your still life drawing. I will show you. So I actually did that and I pulled some of my ingredients. So we have an onion, I got two tortilla chips, jalapeno, and a tomatillo or a green tomato. So I'm gonna show you guys why that's gonna be helpful in just a little bit. I told you guys these are chilaquiles verdes. So they actually have, I'm gonna add one more chip here, green sauce over them. So I'm gonna just add some squiggles and then later I'm gonna add some color and it's gonna look like sauce. Now, if you guys come to the museum, you might also see something that kind of looks like nachos. So I would definitely keep your eyes up for it. Now, something that's really important is to add some color. Now, it's okay, again, if it's not 100% realistic, just have fun with it. Now, some mediums might be easier to work with than others. Think about using colored pencils, crayons, maybe skinnier markers, Sharpies, pen. All right, and there we have it. So that's what my recipe kind of looks like. Now, what do you think is the most important step of this all? The ingredients, right? So we just spent that entire time coloring them, but now we need to list them. So for the ingredients, you're gonna make a list. Something that's also really important is to remember the measurements. Now something else that you can also add to this step if you wanna just 
have some more fun drawing is you have your ingredients in front of you. So let's draw them. Let's practice our still life drawing. Now the next step is really important, which is to list the steps. So there's a couple of options that you can do here. You can write out your steps or you can also make it a visual uh, list. So you can draw out all your different steps or you can write them out. Just whatever you prefer to do. Now something that I did is I made sure to put stars right next to steps that you might need some adult supervision to do. Okay, so once you choose which one you're gonna do, I'm gonna keep this one in my ingredient book. You are going to start collecting the pages to make your book. Okay, so I told you to see if your family wanted to participate. So it turns out that my family wanted to make this cookbook with me. So my sister, she wrote down and made her famous banana bread recipe. Now what's really special about this is that my sister doesn't actually live with me. She's in a different state. So she was able to email me these pictures so that they can be enjoyed as well. Now my mom, she made a puffed rice tower or Rice Krispie treats. And she also, she made a visual recipe. My husband decided not to include some of the steps, so he just wrote down the ingredients and left it all up to the creative chef decision. And as did my dad. My dad wrote down mole nachos, and he wrote down just the ingredients as well. And this is the most important recipe, which is Picasso, my dog. He loves these peanut butter dog treats. So we found it really important to include it in our family recipe books. So once you have all your recipes, make sure that you put them in the order that you like. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And make sure you add yours as well. So stack them all on top of each other, make sure they're straight. An extra step that you can do is you can add your book cover. So I made mine, it says my family cookbook. Now, you may have noticed that in the corners, I have cut out a little triangle. So, I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly. You're just gonna fold the edge of your paper. Now, and practicing safety with your scissors, you're just gonna clip this little edge right there. Now, why do you think that we made this hole? We made it so that we can tie our book together. So again, just make sure all your pages are in the order that you want and that the holes all align. Now this step might be a little easier if you have a pencil. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the string or something to tie with that I told you to grab at the beginning and you're gonna find a hole, make sure that they all align, and you're gonna put your string right there and you're gonna push it through using your pencil's help. It might take some extra pushing, so. Once the string is through the hole, you're gonna make sure that you tie it real tight because you don't want to lose any of your recipes. And there you go. And there you have it. This is what it looks like all together. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty hungry and I am very excited to go and try out some of these recipes. So thank you so much for watching Cooped Up with the Carter and we'll catch you next time.